Should you purchase Redfall if you plan to play it solo? Should you purchase Redfall in general? Is this game something I want to replay or refund? These are the questions that I'm going to try and answer in today's video. I'm taking this one very serious because the early reviews for this game are abysmal, as in people are saying it is not good. So I wanted to see for myself. For context, I had no interest in playing this game up until the day before it came out. The only thing that changed was that I found out it was also releasing on Game Pass, which I could get a month of for $15. Pro tip by the way, that's a great way to try out a new game. I was pretty bored of playing my usual games, so I figured, why the hell not, dude? Let's play this thing. It's supposed to be something in the realm of a vampire left for dead with a little Borderlands mixed in, right? At least that's what I thought. Seemed cool. I wanted to try it out. I also want to point out that I do have a pretty top of the line gaming PC, and I'm not just saying this to brag. I'm saying this because I know a lot of people are having performance issues with this game right now. I didn't though, so this review is going to be based off of game design and execution alone. I do want you to be aware though that a lot of people are having issues, so if you don't have a really good computer, you're probably going to have some problems. Alright, I want to start by talking about the first things that I noticed, whether they were good or bad, right from the get-go. When I first launched the game, I was getting about 7.5 FPS on the title screen. I was really worried for all of a few seconds, but then it evened out and all was well. The game asked for a few settings adjustments and then slapped me in the face with one of my least favorite ways to start a new game. A demand that I either A, create a new account, or B, log into an existing one. And the perpetrator here was Bethesda. I like Bethesda though, so I figured I'll just indulge them on this one. They let me in and I was greeted with the four characters that I had the option of playing the game as. You have Jacob, who they specifically call out as being an orphan. No idea why they had to go and roast him like that, by the way. He's a sharpshooter who can track enemies with a raven, go invisible, and summon a ghost sniper. Very cool. Layla, the telekinetic, she can levitate herself, summon a shield that blocks out enemies, and summon a vampire ex-boyfriend to assist her in battle. The vendor who can throw a lightning spear, teleport himself, and UV bomb the earth around him like Neji doing a rotation. And finally Remy who can throw C4, summon a robo dog to help out, and create a healing circle around her. I ended up choosing the vendor, they had me at lightning spear and teleportation. Need I say more? And the fact that this guy canonically is a streamer has nothing to do with it, okay? I mean, I'm a streamer, yes, but that's not why I chose him just so you know. So we get the intro cinematic going and then I find myself waking up in front of a couple of vampires feasting on some other poor bozo right in front of me. I found this particular cutscene to be really cool as it made me actually think, oh shit, I'm in this now. Like, we're gaming. There is a reason I'm pointing this out, I will get to that later. I take control of my character and we're off right to the settings where I turn off motion blur. Sorry, I just can't do it. Movement does feel pretty good to me, and throughout my time playing the game, I actually came to enjoy it somewhat, for the most part. We'll get to that. And the scenery, I really did like. I thought a lot of the game had cool visuals. I mean, look at this, for example. Even watching this footage back now while editing, I really do like the way the game looks. Unfortunately, not long after this is when I started to find some issues with Redfall, specifically my first encounter with combat. And you know, when combat is where the view of the game shifts negatively, you know it's not gonna be good. So I had the option of sneaking around the enemies or fighting them. Obviously, I chose fighting. I wanted to have some fun. Before jumping in, I did want to get a feel for my gun, so I aimed it to see how that handled. I noticed it felt a little funny. Oh, you know why? Because when I aim, my mouse sensitivity goes down. That's because the game wants you to have a steadier shot when you're aiming. Okay, no problem, I get that. But I'm pretty experienced with shooters, and I like it when my aiming sense is the same as the unaimed sense. So I'm on one universal sensitivity. You know what I mean? So I go to the options and discover they don't actually have that setting in the game. Your aim sense is locked to your regular sense. You can't adjust both, only the one. Why though? I don't really understand. Why take that control out of the player's hands? It's not something I'm gonna abuse. It's just a simple setting to help me enjoy the game more. Anyways, for the time I dealt with it and snuck up behind my first enemy. I aimed my gun and realized there is an incredible amount of weapon sway when aiming. I get that this is a personal stylistic choice that the devs made. And before you ask, no, you can't just hit shift or alt to steady your aim. So that's just how the gun handles. Personally, I'm not a fan of that really over-the-top weapon sway. I just think it makes me have less fun with the shooting, but okay. I did find the hip fire to be more enjoyable overall, and I'll tell you why. 
When you're hip firing, you can still move around freely. And remember, I actually like the movement. It feels nice. When you aim though, your character feels like he's moving in quicksand. Not only is your aim sense slower, which makes me feel like I'm moving slower in the first place, but you can't move around as fast when you're aiming. So aiming really, to me, did not feel good at all. Hip fire was where it was at. What I'd really like though, is to be able to move like this guy. He doesn't even have to use his legs. On the topic of janky AI, this was kind of a common occurrence across Redfall, and it's a huge gripe of mine. The AI are, in a word, soulless. They don't feel well programmed at all. Some of them are incredibly dumb. Some of them get stuck and don't move. Most of them don't even feel like a real threat, and I definitely can't take them serious. But then, for as bad as they feel, sometimes they'll hit you and do a concerning amount of damage. I'd also like to mention that I did try out the medium difficulty and the hard difficulty, and it seems like all that really does is change the amount of damage that you take and give out. And while we're talking about enemies, I can't forget to mention, unfortunately, how few of them there are. I can't tell you how many times I walked through the streets seeing no one. Not a single thing. I felt like I was literally playing an unfinished game, like a developer demo. I couldn't believe the sheer amount of nothing in the wild. And then sometimes when the enemies do spawn in, they don't even remember to attack me, like this guy here didn't. It's really depressing. Across my three hours of playing the game, I do think I ran into a couple of bosses. I use that term loosely though because I really couldn't tell at the time that they were bosses. I only knew because I got an achievement after killing them, so I suspect they were important. For a few of them, they really didn't look all that different than regular mobs, so I had no idea. For one of them, I kind of suspected it was a boss fight because it trapped me inside of a room and it was teleporting in between the walls and also it had like a special name. The only problem was that there was no music music change to accompany this so it really didn't feel all that great it's very weird fighting a boss without any kind of music playing like a music change to indicate it's a boss it really makes me appreciate all the games that go out of their way to have cool boss music even so in that one true boss fight it really didn't feel all that high stakes it felt more of like a nuisance the boss was just teleporting in between the walls to be honest with you i didn't know if that was what was supposed to happen or if the game was just bugging out all right let's talk about the fire station now now. That is the first place that you reach in town and it's your base of operations for at least some amount of time. I promise I'm not just spoiling for the sake of spoiling, I have actual things I need to discuss about this place. So when you get there you have to free the residents inside because they're trapped by vampires. Once you do that they come out and inhabit the building and do various stuff around the rooms. I didn't actually talk to many of them because the first one I did talk to was so boring I just gave up. I do want to bring up the specifics about the way the residents came out of the room they were hiding in. Why? I'll explain. Because remember that intro cutscene with the spooky vampires that I really liked? Well, apparently, cutscenes like that are incredibly rare in this game. Across the three hours that I played, I only got one cutscene. And it was that first one, at the beginning of the game. Every other single cutscene after that one looked like this. Wait, this is them coming out of the room? I don't know what the technical term for that kind of cutscene is. One viewer of mine called it comic booky. I just call it lazy. Here's how the missions work. You come up to the second floor of the fire station and you interact with this pool table. You don't even talk to someone face to face. There, they show you the missions. Have you ever seen a more uninspired mission layout? I know I haven't. You start with one, you do that, you unlock more, you do them, you unlock more. Unfortunately, every time you pick a mission, you just get this glorified PowerPoint crap. Then you go out and do some really meaningless task. Usually it's like a fetch quest, come back, turn it in, and get another PowerPoint. And at that point, it's just rinse and repeat. It is very uninspiring, and it made me pretty much lose all interest I had in the characters after seeing this. I can't believe how much I was craving a real cutscene when I was doing these missions. I just wish they hadn't even given me that first one at the beginning of the game, because at that point I had expectations for more, and when they never came, I was just disappointed constantly. And look, I only played three hours, there might be more cutscenes later, but dude, if I can't even make it to that point, what, what does it matter? All these individual elements so far really just don't add up to an enjoyable experience. You have tedious questing that makes you venture out into a lifeless, barren world. When you do find AI, they're not very fun, and you'll never get a cutscene that you can just sit back and enjoy. 
You know what should have been an enjoyable experience though? The abilities my character had. Yet the developers somehow found a way to make something called Arc Javelin boring. I was also immediately disappointed when I got my teleport ability. And I can't believe this is a real sentence I just said. First of all, the range I can throw this thing is way too low. Second, I have to pull out this clunky gadget before I can throw it. All the while, it actually slows my character down when I do, so if I'm trying to be creative and use it to escape an enemy, I just end up getting hit anyway. I will say I can actually teleport to the gadget when it's midair, so I think that's pretty cool. But then I fall to the ground, stumble, and take fall damage, completely eliminating most of the fun of the teleport. This movement ability that should make me feel like I have more freedom in my movement really just does nothing but weigh me down. I should feel quick and free with a teleport ability. It shouldn't feel cumbersome. By the way, when I was testing my abilities, I found this guy who was apparently trapped, even though he had no visible restraints and there were no enemies around. I did end up freeing him by holding down the E button and I followed him for a second before he just disappeared into nothing. I could honestly go on, but I think you guys get the picture. So I think it's time we answer those questions from the beginning of the video. Should you purchase Redfall if you plan to play it solo? For what it's worth, it wasn't playing solo that was keeping me from having fun. It was everything else that was keeping me from that. So yeah, assuming the developers come out with the biggest update in gaming history and completely fix all of the problems with the game, it could be enjoyable as a solo player. It wasn't not having friends to play with that didn't make this fun. But should you purchase Redfall at all? Well, selling this game for $70 should be considered a criminal act. Let's get that out of the way right now. With today's meta of releasing broken games and then fixing them after, there may come a time when a Redfall purchase makes sense. But I need to judge the game how it is right now. And right now, I strongly recommend you do not purchase this game. Unfortunately for me, and I really hate to say this because I wanted to love it, Redfall is a refund, not a replay. If you guys enjoyed this video, do me a favor and hit the subscribe button. It really helps out the channel. And I want to thank my patrons for helping fund videos like this one. A special shout out to the VIPs who go above and beyond. You guys rock. I hope this review helped you guys out in some small way at least. And thanks for watching.